I'm Claire from Creative The Ottaway. I'm an independent demonstrator for Stamping Up in the UK. Thank you for joining me today. Um, a lovely little make today, craft along. Um, I will show you some samples first because I just got carried away making so many. But first, the paper that I used. So there's two catalogues running at the moment. The mini catalogue that's got some lovely spring fresh ideas in and then the annual catalogue and because of the card that I wanted to make today I have used some of the paper from the main catalogue um, so I have used a wash in beauty for the make that I'm going to demonstrate um, you sort of forget about it it's on the first page and once you get really into the papers you you forget to go back to the first page and this is really really pretty spring flowers on it um, it's got a piece of paper that it comes in 12 by 12 so I've cut mine down to 6 by 6 already but it's got like a seam so there's um, a border that goes across the bottom and the top so this is perfect for this card um, um, I'll show you what I mean so where's my sample so I've got quite a few um, this one is by the bay I've sort of got the head of myself and done a Father's Day card because you know what it's like last minute you're like oh, I haven't even done the Father's Day card so this is one for that um, very unassuming on the front just a nice piece of design series paper just showing off um, the beautiful papers in this set but when you open it up ta look at that isn't that beautiful so this paper lends itself so well because it's got some real um, sparkles in the paper some silver and gold some blues sort of threaded throughout the designer series paper and this just lifts these panels so the panels that I've done are different sizes so I'll go through this one was three inch panels in the middle um, then we've got the rain or shine paper I've just fussy cut the little dog out of the front because he looks quite cheery life is better with friends like you look at that a paper hug from me to you and those panels are four inch panels and I just fussy cut the little fox out as well so that's four inch and then I've got this one from the celebration papers this was the dainty flowers paper which again has got this um, panel in there that you can just cut up to make a seam very unassuming from the front again just using up retired paper and they're five inch panels so they're really beautiful can you see how the seam plays out across the page and it fills the card so that's a really lovely make as well um the other one that i did was um which one was it fancy flora so i wasn't sure about this paper from the brochure but actually when you get it in person it's really lovely um and when i open the inside can you see that really pops off of the page so i've used orchid oasis as the background um cards to just make the page pop so they're my four samples if i just bring them back in again so this one they're all made in exactly the same way this one has got five inch panels in the middle so you can see how that looks this one has got four inch panels so that one's like that so you can see more of the um, background paper but again still very effective and then this one has got three inch panels and i'm not really sure which one i love the most I quite like the big seams for the five inch but equally this one's really lovely as well so I will show you the basics of how to make this card and then you can go away and make your own version add whatever size panels you want and whatever embellishments you want but I promise you that you will love it and it will be one of those cards that you come back to time and time again so you really don't need much stuff for this um, it's a good use of all your stash that you've been hoarding all those pretty papers that you just don't know what to use because you want to show them off to the best of their um, just that you just love them so much um, so we need a base card um, I'm in the UK so my base card will be eight and two eighths by five and seven eighths and that just needs a score on it to make it into a card and then the panels the exciting bit 
so I think we're going to do the five inch panels today because the paper that I'm using has got a nice big seam on it. Um, so the card, because they're layered, it's got card and then designer series paper. The card is, you need four, and they're five and one eighth by one and five eighth. And then the DSP on top of that is five inches by one and a half. Now that's because I like an eighth of an inch around my borders. Not too much card, but just enough to frame the paper. Um, if you want a quarter of an inch uh, pat border around, just adjust your sizes accordingly. Now the folded mechanism at the back, let me show you that if I move that over. There's a piece of card that runs along the back that just helps it stand up. Um, that is the same for whatever size panel you do. So um, it's one and three quarter inches by eight. Um, that was the correct size for that. You can see it's quite a thick panel that runs along the back. So the only thing I did do is um, on the smaller one, it just looked too big. So I did that one at one and a half inches, but it's still by eight inches. And you just score that at every two inch, so two, four and six. And then obviously you need the extra DSP for the front um, just and the card to do the background. But the rest, you can just make whatever you fancy. So, should we start crafting? Enough talking. So I've got a piece of white card. I'm going to make my card base, which is five and seven eighths. I'm going to cut it across on the long side. Five and seven eighths, just on there. Okay, so you could get two cards out of one A4 sheet, which I love. Just going to open that out, and I want it at eight and two eighths. So, oh, that's there's such a tiny amount to come off. It's like debating whether to do it. Um, if you've got a tiny amount to come off, uh, it's there's a little bit of a tip that I do. So, um, it's a really thin, tiny, tiny sliver. Now, if you just go at it all gung ho and just push it up. Sometimes it, it's just not a straight edge. So what I tend to do is put my cutter in the middle and press down. And then I go up and down or down and up, whichever it is. And you get a really nice crisp edge, okay? Just by putting your cutting blade in the middle. So that's a nice edge. So I know that I need to score that in half, which is four and one eighth. Okay, and I'm just doing that with my scorer, not my cutter. And that gives you your card base. Perfect, okay? So we just put that to one side. Now, the panels for the inside, I'm going to use this, which is a wash with beauty, because it's already in a seam, um, which is really handy for me. I don't have to think too much about it when I'm putting it together. It will just come together really easy. But this needs to be five inches, so we need to take an inch off, either the top or the bottom or a bit and a bit. So what I mean by that is, have a look, if you, if I put that at five inches and I were to cut off an inch, it's going to cut up that line there, which really cuts off a lot of this bottom greenery, which I quite want on there. So if I turn it round and I do the same again put it at five inches and cut it off what where does that go so that's going to be right at the top of the flowers i don't really want that either i want some of the white seam so i'm going to move it to five and a half what does it look like yeah that's perfect so i'm going to cut it off at half an inch so i've still got some of that white and i've got that bit off okay so that half an inch i don't need but I need to turn it around now and cut it at five so that I'm also taking half an inch off of the bottom. Okay, so that you don't you wouldn't miss that bit. Okay, you could use that on something though, because it's two-sided paper. <laughs> okay, so that now is five inches, and I need to cut it into panels of one and a half. So I need four panels, which on a six by six piece of paper is just perfect because you use 
every single bit of the paper. Okay. And don't overthink where you're cutting because when you put it all together, you'll just love it. Okay, so that's those four panels. Move them over the way here. Okay, just off side. Now the front, the same paper, I'm going to use this as the front because it sort of hints at how beautiful it is inside. And I need a three inch piece. Okay, three inches by five inches for the front. So that's my front piece done. Isn't that beautiful paper? Okay, and then for the inside panels that are at the back, so the clouds on this bit, um, this is not necessary, but it's a nice finishing touch. So they need to be three and seven eighths. Okay, three and seven eighths by five and five eighths. Um, and they're that size to fit specifically in this card, so you might want to adjust yours. And you just want two the same, really. So three and seven eighths, just like that. And five and five eighths. I'm really excited to see how this comes out. I just love it when you're putting it all together. The hardest bit is actually choosing the paper, isn't it? Okay, so my paper, my DSP is all stuck, uh, cut. Now I'm going to cut the panels and the other bits that I need for um, the background of the DSP. So Stampin' Up! are really good. When they um, put the papers in the book, they actually list the colours underneath. So uh, I'm not going to be able to find it quickly now. Let's have a look. Yeah. So a wash in beauty is on page 131 and underneath it lists all of the colours that coordinate. So you, no thinking, you just have to just have a look. So what I did was picked one of the papers, which I think just will make this design, a series paper, just pop off the page. And it really does. This is Granny Apple Green. So for the panels, they need to be um, five and one eighth. So I'm just going to cut across my um, A4 sheet and just cut off at five and one eighth so I can do it all in one go. And then they need to be one and five eighths. So they're an eighth bigger. So there's one, one and five, two, one and five. And the last one, so that's my four panels. And then the front bit needs to be five and a quarter by three and a quarter. So is that, is that going to be five and a quarter? Yeah. So if I do that this way to try and save card. So three and a quarter by five and a quarter. So that's to layer my front piece. Now I have done that a quarter of an eighth inch bigger just because it gives me a nice um, big panel on the front but really still focuses on the designer series paper and then I need a piece for my background that is eight inches by one and three quarter so one and three quarter by eight inches so just such a tiny bit off of there and then that needed to be scored every two inches. So get rid of that cutting blade because you don't want to be cutting this off at this stage. Um, this is actually the third time I videoed this. Um, honestly, first time um, an update kicked in, switched my iPad off. The second time my little kitty cats, I've got two um, kittens, although they're not kittens anymore really, they're two. Um, they jumped on the table sent everything flying oh, honestly so this is third time lucky so you end up with that um one and three quarters by eight inches and just fold it so you've got a, like a mountain in the middle and we'll do that now comes the bit that is like watching paint dry because i need to glue it all so i'm going to do this back panel because oh no i'm going to 
show you some ribbon on there, so I'll do that next. So I've got these pieces, so four panels of card, da, da, da. and I'm just going to put some glue on the back of my panels. I'm using Tombow glue because it has a bit of wiggle room, and I will try and be super speedy. Um, you can fast forward this bit if you don't want to listen to the chatter. Okay. So I completely forgot that this paper um, was in the catalogue until I was designing this card and I was looking for some paper that had a nice scene on it. Do you remember the um, Horizons paper we used to have? Um, that, that would be perfect, perfect for this. I think um, that's probably in clearance rack as well. So if you're shopping with um, your local demo, have a look on the clearance rack, rack before you put your order through. Um, if you're looking for stamping up supplies and you're in the UK, you can always shop with me. I would love that. Um, my YouTube videos are always free because I just want to share my love of crafting. But I do run workshops and I do um, buy a lot of stock <laughs> just because it's so lovely, isn't it? Um, very excited to hear that we're going to have a colour refresh as well. So, right, there's my panels. Now, I don't need to worry too much about them because they are going to work as a seam. If I bring my card back over, I'm just going to put these two in there. Um, there's no right or wrong to this. Just have a look. Oh, look at that. No, we don't need to. We don't need the floral side up because we want the panels to pop. So I'm quite happy sticking some glue on that side and putting that in my card. So one panel goes on that side, like that, and this panel goes on the other. Okay, we're nearly there. Your patience will be rewarded. It will be worth it, I promise. So that's that. Now, should we do the front bit again? So if I bring this piece over, now the I could stick that straight on, it would be job done. But what I like to do is put a bit of ribbon across the front, um, but a fake bow. It's really hard to do bows and make them look really neat. Um, you can, it is possible. Maybe you're somebody who can do bows every single time. But I just want to do something really quick just for the front of the card and it can be a fake bow. So I've got um, a fat spritzer because I want something fat and I've just tied a knot around it and then I double knot it like that. I don't want too much of a tail left off because I'm going to tuck it around. So I'm just lining it on there to see how wide I need it because you really don't need it too wide. And I can take that off and you can see there's a bit of a loop. So this paper, uh, where have I put that? I've got some double sided tape and I am just going to put it along each side. OK, so one that side. Um, you could do it with Tombow glue, um, but you have to sort of fiddle around with trying to hold it in place as well. And I, I don't have the patience for that. I just want to get on with my card and get to the excited ta-da! bit okay so i am going to put it top and bottom even though i probably don't need it and i'm going to put a bit in the middle as well so just rub those down and then peel those off if you have trouble getting the backing off the best thing to do is rub it with your nail really hard and then it will peel off so it's sticky either side I am going to tuck that round one side. I want it fairly down the bottom. I want the glittery side up though. don't know if you can see that on camera. No, that's not the glittery side. Oh, right. Just stick it on one side. Then fold it over. And I actually want the loop a bit more over. So that's it there. So because it's double sided, you can peel it back off and move it. Okay, so it's on there on that side job done okay now if i peel off the other bits because this is just going to stick straight on my granny apple green card and it won't move 
and my ribbon will be stuck in place and it's all done in one go. Okay, let's bring that over. Got little sparkly bits everywhere now. So remember this is a slightly bigger border, it's a quarter of an inch. So that's gonna go there and that is just done. And then all that I do with that is just cut through that loop and it gives that nice little fake bow effect. Can you see? Love it. So bring that back over, back to Tombow glue because it's got a bit of wiggle room. I'm just going to stick this on the front of my card and then I can think about the sentiment and who it's for after. So that's going to come there. I always put the bow to one side, whether it's left or right, so that you can fit any sentiment on. So that's the outside. Now let's do the inside. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. Bring this back in. So what we're going to do is stick our panels on first before we stick it in. This is the easiest way to do it. So you've got your um, mechanism here and we're going to concentrate on this bit here. We're going to put some glue just in the middle, quite a bit, not too much. Mine's right at the end so it's real, um, it's hard work pressing it out. Then I get my panel. Now if you're lucky enough to use, uh, have grid paper, you can measure it by the little squares but you don't need to do that. So I'm just going to stick that on there and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I'm just going to move that up a bit just so it's a bit more central. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six and a bit. So that's about right. So you can do that by eye. You can do it with a ruler, it's entirely up to you, but that panel is now stuck, okay? So then you get the next panel and you put it face down, exactly on top of that one. And then again in the middle area, put some glue. Easy peasy. And press that over and just hold that on. And then the next one you put face up. So remember to put some glue in the middle just like so, and that goes face up exactly over the previous one. And then the last one goes face down, okay, and some glue. And that's it, look at that, okay. So give that a second or two to stick, and then there's your panel. Isn't that beautiful? So bring your card in. Now, there's no right or wrong. There's no set place where you need to stick it. This will alter with the size of your panels. If you stick it right to the edge of your DSP, like so, so right to the edge here, you'll have just a little bit of a, um, I don't know what that is, the standing panels. I really like to make mine really stand out. So I take them in a bit like that. Now if you're sticking them at the edge obviously you can just put some glue at the edge and your job done. If you want them to stand out even more so you find out where you want it to be like that. I think I want it about there. Then I bring that over and just close it all up and then I put some glue on this piece here just on the square bit that's showing not on the panel. And then I bring the back of my card over and just rub on there for a second. Flip it over and open it out. And then put some glue on this side. Okay. And then that one comes over there. Are you ready? So there's our beautiful front. And then there's our, ta-da! Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Can you imagine receiving that card? You'd be like, oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. What a wonderful wow on the inside. Okay, so you can put a sentiment on one of these. You could put an extra panel on the back to put your personal message. You can jazz this up as much as you want. You can add some details, some embellishments, but basically make it your own. Make it stand out from all the others on the shelf. Thank you for watching. I hope you've loved that. 
um, I love doing these two toys. I love Wow on the inside cards. So if you like more of the same, um, just subscribe and click the notification bell and that will show you when I've posted a video. Um, if you're in the UK, um, please shop with me at creativeyachtway.co.uk and for more ideas and inspiration, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Oh, shall I just show you them all? If you're still with me, look at these. How amazing are these? Da, da, da. Beautiful. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.